If you're going to play hockey in Grand Rapids, you better bring your lunch bucket. Up here, they only leave the rink when called home for dinner. Here in Grand Rapids, hockey is looked up to and passed down. Whether they're calling your number at Yanmar or grabbing sticks to pick teams at Murphy, Grand Rapids takes pride in playing a hard and heavy game, going to the dirty areas, playing for each other and playing the right way. An underdog with plenty of bite and more rink rats than you can shake a stick at. Things are different up here. People call it the range. But ask the Grand Rapids folks and they'll tell you the Iron Range actually starts a bit further east, over the Prairie River in Greenway. He said there's a split at the river. Talk to me about it. I know that. when you head over the Prairie River heading east, that's kind of the, the line that a lot of people say has been drawn. You got paper on one side and... And mining on the other. All right, well, they both work. Range or not, Grand Rapids is a shining symbol of how hockey is played up north. Considering the population and class sizes, it's amazing Grand Rapids has been such a consistent force in Minnesota hockey since they started making state tournaments in the 70s. It's something our town has wanted to do is get back to state tournaments since 1981 and how the Rothsteins and Mullets and all those guys gave me a call today and says, hey, you're at the party, you might as well dance. I think one thing really unique about Grand Rapids is just sort of the level of uh, hockey consistency that we've had in terms of uh, there's a lot of people that live here that know a lot of things about hockey and are really dedicated to it. It's amazing how many people play D1 hockey or played some level of professional hockey that live in Grand Rapids. It has to be one of the highest per capita places in the world. The core is the tradition that kind of started in the 70s when they started making it to the state tournament and that just spread. I'd say Northern hockey kids are way more grittier than city kids. I think uh, we might be a little tougher on the inside. What is blue collar lunch bucket? How do you see that in a player? That they come to work every day. They, they, they know that they have to work to succeed and I think our coaching staff emphasizes that. I know our new coach, that's his style of hockey. When your team is everyone who shows up, it changes the ante. When you need everyone to make a team, there can only be team. When you stick around, you stick together. Teammates, buddies, brothers, sisters. What do you think works about the Minnesota Association-based hockey model? I think a lot of it just has to do with being part of your community and showing that appreciation to the people that stick around and uh, being part of a, a, of a family that's been together for generations. The kids enjoy playing with their, their friends. It's really preached that you are a whole group coming up. You know that you're a part of it. Is there anybody, if they beat you, you like can't sleep at night because you're so mad? Um, I think that might be more ahead. I think you know it might be more head from the sounds of it. So when you play these city teams, you think you guys are different? You got a different style? You got a different toughness or anything? Down in the cities, they pull kids from everywhere. And like here in Rapids, we just have Rapids kids. I mean, I think we really appreciate playing hard against some of the big programs in the cities. Just kind of a little bit of an underdog role. We relish that. When I go up against the city's team, I want to win. I don't want to lose to some city slickers or anything like that. <laughs> you end up with a D1 daughter, a D1 son. You know, what did Grand Rapids do to get them ready for that? If the ice here wasn't being used, they could uh, skate oftentimes late at night. There was always outdoor ice too. There were so many places they could go and play. Today, outdoor games are a novelty. The stuff of eye black and pom-pom hats on goalies. Outdoor ice in Grand Rapids is business as usual. 
to be from here and be practicing outside. It's just, that's like a whole different world. That's like Green Bay Packers stuff. You know, for our kids, a lot of times it's important just so that they have enough ice that they can practice outside as a team. But on top of that, kids up here are outside skating on their own all the time. And I think from a skill acquisition uh, standpoint, it's just they have free space to, to just learn and explore and do things hockey-wise. You know, we had a rink a couple blocks from our house that was kind of like the main rink everyone would go to. And so it was every day after school right up there and so much hockey outdoors and you come really close with everybody. Weekends we spent all day and, and it wasn't just me, it was all the neighborhood kids. It was just part of how we grew up. Probably get 15 or 20 hours on the rink every week. We just like playing against each other and making each other better hockey players. Most hockey families in Minnesota are familiar with Grand Rapids. You've probably visited for an out-of-town tournament. These positive experiences and a 10-year naming rights deal help the community pay for a much-needed rink renovation at the brand new Yanmar Arena. Well, the partnership with the city in, in Yanmar, it set us up in the way that um, those funds are directly benefiting all the programs that utilize the arena. This is a rink that attracts a lot of teams from a lot of places to come play in, which also attracts a lot of dollars to Grand Rapids in the middle of the winter. Um, so it's a high priority when they're remodeling it to try to make it look as close to the old building as possible. And I think they really knocked that out of the park. I think it looks a little bit like the old rink, but way, way better. What's the energy like in this, this building with this new roof? What, what's it feel like in here? Is, it, is everybody in town here? It's tough to find an open seat, and I know being a player and being a coach and being a fan, it still gives you goosebumps when you come into the rink and the kids step onto the ice. So basically the people come into town, they pay the tax, and then you beat them in hockey and then they go home. That's, that's the theory anyhow. <laughs> Have a really nice time, but lose a few games. And, and, then they go, yeah. and they put a roof on the rink. Exactly. We'll see you next time. It's not easy to give a cathedral a facelift, but the early returns are in, and they nailed it, taking the best of what was there, making it new all over again. And while it seems these days it's always hockey season, Grand Rapids has made a concerted effort to avoid sports specialization at an early age. As a hockey community, we're really trying the best we can to not get into the sports specialization, but to keep having kids play, you know, multiple sports. And so part of us starting late is actually intentional um, to allow those kids to play those fall sports because we think it benefits them, it benefits the community. What other sports do you play and do you think that helps you as a hockey player? So I play football, baseball, and golf. I play baseball, and I think that helps my hand-eye. And I was a catcher for a while, toughened me up. I bet. <laughs> I played uh, football in the fall, hockey in the winter, and then baseball in the spring. You're still playing hockey for a long time. You know, you get the long winters and there's a lot of outdoor ice and stuff, but I think it goes a long ways towards, you know, building yourself as a person too. You know, you're playing with different groups of kids and different coaches, doing a totally different sport. So it's gonna make you a better athlete if you're doing other stuff. And I think it, that translates to the ice too. There's no shortage of hockey IQ and experience on the range, and the Grand Rapids community gives back with former players returning to coach. Occasionally I'll get a letter from someone that, you know, mentions that I made a difference in their life, and, you know, some, a lot of coaches get that at some point or other, but those are the things that I think I remember the most. There's so many good players that have come through, you know, I mean, they had those great teams in the 80s, and. So many of those guys stay there and coach up kids and um, it's kind of like just a revolving door of dedicated hockey people and good hockey players that um, help the next wave of kids. Grand Rapids continues to build the base of its youth program, encouraging players to bring a friend and providing free gear for the first year. At the youth level, Grand Rapids combined with Greenway Coleraine on the girls' side. Lightning and Thunder Hawks the perfect storm. We reached out to all the girls that were playing and said, hey, why don't you bring a friend next time? You know, just made it free and easy, just bring a friend. We'll just start there. 
And so we did that um, and we got a great response. Um, Grand Rapids does a fantastic job and I should say Clafton Skate does a fantastic job of providing gear for all first time players. So it's free? Free, free gear. Yep, they get to rent it. Well, they give it back at the end of the year, but they yeah. use it for free for the year. And so these kids come in and they pay, you know, 120 bucks, 150 bucks to play for the year. And that's really it. I mean, that's the whole cost. Hockey in Grand Rapids has remained unchanged for years in the very best way. Like a snow globe frozen in time, there to remind us, hockey is still the best medicine. What do you love about playing hockey? I love how um, when I step on the ice, my worries go away. Like if I had a bad day at school, maybe I have practiced after, then um, I step on the ice and I just think about hockey, not anything else. Orange is a winner, and black can't be beat. One. All right. Another community 180 miles down I-35 would agree. Tune in to episode three of Minnesota Hockey's The Association, featuring White Bear Lake, coming soon. Yeah.